Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Michael, it sounds like you're really doing things right with your rentals. You have very little turnover. Your rentals are very profitable. You don't have a lot of maintenance requests. What are you doing? What would you say is your secret to to your rental portfolio? Yeah, I think for us, the the thing... The number one thing that we found is if we invest upfront in the rental, we make the properties extremely nice. We we do all the little extra detail things that provides us with a much better pool of applicants and uh, honestly a higher rental rate because we're we're offering sort of a a higher end product, if you will. That tenants seem to really like. We're all buying rental properties to make money, but if you're constantly dealing with repairs and vacancies and other expenses, it can be very difficult to actually turn a profit on a rental property. I wanted to bring Michael on the show today because he's really doing things right with his rentals. All of his rentals are very passive. They don't take much time for him to manage at all. And they're all very profitable. His rentals all cash flow great. So on the show today, we're going to see if we can figure out exactly what Michael's doing with his portfolio. We'll take a look at one of his deals and go over all of his numbers. Before we get into the show, I just want to point out that Michael is a big fan of the podcast. He's been a longtime listener and his company, Ask Rick, has been a longtime sponsor of the podcast but Michael is not paying to be here today. Ask Rick is not sponsoring today's show. We're not here to talk about Ask Rick. We're here to talk about Michael's rentals. So let's take a really quick break. We'll thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll talk to Michael McConnell. There is a ton of paperwork involved when you're getting a mortgage on a rental property. Lenders are going to want to see two years of tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. I mean, it's a lot of work and a huge hassle. Shaylee Ridge from Ridge Lending Group has a brand new loan program where she doesn't care about any of that. She actually doesn't need any paperwork from you at all. She's just going to look at the deal. The most important thing she wants to see is, does it make sense? Is the property going to cash flow? If it does, she'll give you a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Now, the rates are going to be a little bit higher than a traditional full dock loan, but it's still a great deal, somewhere between 3.9 and 5%. She can close quickly, and there's no hassle. She can even do a cash-out refi with this program. If you want to learn more, just reach out to Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, LendingGroup.com, NMLS 42056. Rental Income Podcast. Michael, let's start off talking about your portfolio. Can you tell me about your rentals? Sure. We have um, currently we have nineteen single families and one duplex. What type of neighborhood are they in? We generally find ourselves in C plus and B minus neighborhoods. I'd call it okay. And are you, do you like buying three bedrooms, two bedrooms? Like, what, how are the houses set up? We've got kind of a mix between um, three bedroom, you know, two bath to two bedroom, one bath, one and a half. It's it's probably about an equal split between those. We don't really have a, a preference. It just happens to be whatever fits that neighborhood the best. Do, do you find that one type of setup works better for rentals or do they all rent pretty quickly? Uh, for us, they all rent really quickly. We can't seem to get them fast enough right now and um, get them renovated and turned over. So, And it That's doesn't great. seem to matter if it's a three-bedroom, two-bath ranch or a, a two-bedroom, one-bath. They all seem to go pretty quickly Awesome. Right now. now, you mentioned in the intro that, that you're fixing the properties up. So is your strategy to buy outdated houses and then do a full rehab on them? That is our general process. We we tend to find things that have been not touched in a long time. You know, we we've taken out a lot of shag carpet and a lot of pink tile, a lot of kitchens and bathrooms, and so we tend to yeah find things that need need quite a bit of updating, um, buy them, and then really do a lot in the front end for renovations and infrastructure for those properties. We find that gives us the most value for our market. 
let's talk about exactly what you're doing. So like say in the kitchen. So are you doing a full gut job on the kitchen? Typically, yes. Um, on occasion, we might find a kitchen that, you know, the cabinets are still in good shape. But in general, we're doing new cabinets, new floors, new counters, um, backsplash, usually new lighting. Um, and all of the plumbing is always um, from scratch, basically, because a lot of it in our area is old galvanized. And so you end up having a lot more problems down the road if you just don't take the time to go ahead and replace it while you're doing the rest of the renovations. So it, it sounds like you're basically redoing everything and it, it doesn't sound like you're, you're doing things on the cheap. Like you're, you're really doing it right. Yeah. We, it, when we first started, we were trying to be a lot more budget conscious, but what we realized pretty quickly was when you buy, you know, maybe just do laminate countertops, it doesn't take long for one turnover tenant where they've, you know, melted a countertop. So we've, <laughs> We found that you know if you if you invest the money in in granite, for example, or maybe you get a sale on quartz or one of those things, you can really save yourself a lot of turnover time and a lot of um, expense long term. But it does require you know more investment up front. But mm -hmm. for us, our returns have been so much better by doing that, both better quality of tenant and a lot less maintenance requests. Are, are you doing stainless steel appliances too? We are. Everything is. Um, stainless. I tell people when I talk to them about rental property that I try to make it almost like a franchise. So it's always the same stainless appliances. It's always the same color granite. It's the same color um, paint and backsplash tile, all of those things. Now you're really going high end. And a lot of times like a C minus B plus or B neighborhood, you don't need to go with stainless and, and granite. Uh, is that typical in the neighborhoods that you're buying in, or are you making the properties nicer than your competition? I'm definitely making them nicer than the competition. and But we're very careful not to go too far so that we haven't, you know, spent more than, than the house would ever be, you know, you'd ever be able to recoup it. Um, but we definitely want to set ourselves apart. We want, we want to find really good tenants and those, those finishes that little bit extra, you know, it's, you might only spend 15% total on a renovation more than you, you know, in our method, as opposed to, you know, kind of maybe more budget friendly method. But we found that the return is 20% or better on the, on the rent and a lot less turnover. Our, our tenant times are significantly better because there's not really a better property sometimes for those tenants to go to right. because we've given them everything they kind of ever want. Yeah, they, they've really got that wow factor when they walk in. Yeah, and from that standpoint, it's really, you know, it's we get more in rent than, you know, a competitive property. You know, it might be $100 to $250 more, um, and sometimes wow. even more than that. It just sort of depends on which one of those markets we're in. Now, what about the bathrooms? I, I assume that you're doing a, a gut job on the bathrooms, too. Yeah, we are. Um, I haven't found a tenant who really likes pink tile yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've tried to avoid that. Uh, yeah, it's the same kind of thing we do. Everything's typically the same. It's, you know, subway tile, it's new, new flooring. And when the, we do the flooring, you know, we're typically doing tile floor because, you know, the bathrooms aren't very big in a lot of these properties. So, you know, you could put sheet vinyl in for maybe $50, but if you put in, you know, a, you find a good deal on ceramic tile, for example, you know, you might spend $200 or $250 with labor. And, and that's one of those detail spaces where it, it really does make a difference to the right. tenant and to the final appraisal of the property. The value sure. of the property is worth more when the fit and finish is better. What are you doing for the flooring in the rest of your house? I, I've got a lot of carpet in my properties and I'm working on getting rid of it. It, it just gets too expensive to to keep replacing it and, and to maintain it. Do you put carpet in or are you doing something else for your flooring? We are typically only doing laminate flooring throughout. Smart. And we buy, and it's the same flooring throughout every property. We buy it in bulk because we're constantly working on a property. So we're buying plenty. We're getting a really good deal. And yeah, we're, we're trying to avoid carpet at all costs. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really a nightmare. I I'm so done with carpet. Now, what about when you when you buy the appliances? Are you buying appliances from the big box stores, Lowe's and Home Depot, or are you getting them from somewhere else? 
So typically w- what we did when we started, that's exactly what we did. You know, we kind of shop around and look for the best deal who, whoever was one of whatever big box store was having the best sale. But now, um, we went to a local, um, a family owned business locally. And we, j- I sat down with the owner and we just talked about, well, you know, we, we plan to buy maybe six refrigerators and six stoves and six dishwashers this year. And next year it's probably going to be 10. And so I was able to get even better pricing than I could get on sale at a local big box store. So we're able to get stainless at really good rates. It's always the same. And then if there is a maintenance issue, you know, we've got a really good service provider because we provide them so much business. Right. And, th- and that's been a really big win for us being able to do that. You know, I imagine the other benefit is with delivery. I know when I've had appliances delivered from from Lowe's and Home Depot, they, they just basically give you a day and then they'll call you the day before and give you a time frame. But there's no flexibility in, in when it's going to be delivered. You just kind of have to be available. With dealing with a local place, are you able to to maybe customize the schedule a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, we if we say, hey, we really need it in, you know, um, on Thursday at 2 o'clock, they'll be there Thursday at 2 o'clock. Yeah, that's which awesome. really helps and when, you know, because as we have all experienced, sometimes your renovation projects don't go as smoothly as you want. And instead of Thursday at 2 o'clock, now you're, you know, I need it next Tuesday <laughs> at right, 1. Right, right. Yeah, and also, yeah, I personally, I just like supporting local businesses, so that that's an extra little bonus to to support the little guy. Um, now, tell me about the technology. So, in your rentals, you're using a lot of technology. Can you tell me what you're doing? Yeah, so we are trying to make the the homes as attractive as we can for um, people who really do want technology in their homes, and that's everything from smart thermostats to internet-based doorbells and smart lighting that they can control from their phones. Those are some of the other little extra things that we do. And, you know, smart thermostats, I don't know about different parts of the country, but for us, our local utility providers typically provide a rebate for any smart thermostat. So we're, it's really no cost to me. So I get you can get a smart thermostat for basically nothing. Um, and it is something that the tenants like. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that probably in five or 10 years, the, all those technologies, smart thermostats and all that, it's going to be standard. Every every house is going to have that in five or 10 years. But right now, you kind of have a little bit of a wow factor to it. So it's a little bit of an expense, but I, I think you're 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 just getting that that extra little something that tenants are getting. So I, I I think that's smart. Do you put that in your listing or do you just let people discover that when they see the property? We typically will list the like a smart thermostat, for example, or we might just say smart lighting. Um, and then but some of the other things that might be going on, we'll we'll just kind of leave those unspoken. And then when they come in, it's it's a little more. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So all right, so all your rentals are the same inside. So I, I imagine that when you do maintenance, it's got to be easy because you know the, the parts that you're going to need to replace the property. It's not uh, what, what what kind of piping do we have in this property? Uh, okay, I've got to go uh, get that exact part. You, you kind of know everything that you have in the house. So th- does that make your maintenance a lot easier? It really does, you know, because we typically have, you know, if it's a piece of flooring and a piece of flooring gets damaged, well, We've got plenty of flooring left over from you know the renovations, and it's always the same paint color. So there's never worry about oh, did we use, what color did we use for that particular home? Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, creating a set of standards and a process to to manage it, it has really dramatically lowered our maintenance cost annually um, for across all of our properties. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it really sounds like you're treating this like a business. This doesn't sound like a hobby. No, it is definitely a business for us. We we yeah. do our best to run it just like any other business I would run. And we focus on process and we try to treat our tenants as customers. We want them to be very happy and satisfied. And we're very picky about those tenants. So we, we want it to be a great relationship for for both us and for them. Awesome. Well, let's talk about one of your deals to, to see if we can uh, 
kind of dive in a little bit more to what you're doing. So tell me about one of your properties. That This is a hoarder house that you bought. Tell me about this house. What was it like <laughs> when you bought it? Yeah, so we, we bought a hoarder house. Um, it, was, it was quite a process. We, uh, we bought it for about 48000 We put 60000 in, uh, so we we're in for about 108000 um, which that renovation was significantly more than we would normally spend. However, in that particular case, because it was a hoarder house, we had many, many dumpsters to take out, and we couldn't see the walls during the initial walkthrough. So we had some foundation work we ended up having to do. So we did spend quite a bit more, but it was in an actual A neighborhood. Um, and so once we were done, we got it appraised and it came in at 228 and it's currently rented for 1600 a month. Okay. So you're all in at 108 and it's rented for 1600. So, you, you know, a lot of times we look at the 1% rule. So if something, something, if you were all in for a hundred thousand dollars, you'd want it to rent for a thousand a month, but you're doing a lot better than that. Like you're, you're right around like one and a half. Um, so is that really kind of what you target? Like the one and a half percent rule? Yeah. For us, one and a half percent to 2% even on a lot of our properties is a much better return. And we, we see that on every one of our properties and it is because of the amount of time and, and investment we make up front. We, we know that difference matters and we see it in our, in our financials. All right, so if someone was looking to buy in your market, or even you, if you're looking to buy another property, could you meet the one and a half percent rule or two percent rule just looking for deals on the MLS? Or is the way that you're getting that by buying a, a hoarder house and then fixing it up? Is that really how you're getting those returns? Um, that's one way. Um, the hoarder house is obviously an exception, but um, we do find deals, uh, through the MLS. We're, we're not really looking at foreclosures and some of those REO things. We do tend to find deals. We just get very aggressive in our negotiating and we try to find, you know, sometimes off market properties and we're, we're trying to leverage technology to be able to move quickly. As everybody knows in this market right now, it's, mm -hmm. you have to act fast if you want to be able to acquire a property. Right. All right, so so then your your rent is sixteen hundred. How much is your mortgage payment on that property? So the mortgage is right around three hundred and seventy five dollars a month. Wow. So I so you're renting it at sixteen hundred. Your mortgage is three seventy five, and and you're managing everything yourself, right? That's correct. We are. Wow. So you've got some really good buffer there, and you don't really have much vacancy, and you don't really have a ton of maintenance because you've made the property so nice. Yeah. And again, I think maintenance sometimes is one of those things that, and I learned this the hard way, I'm sure like a lot of us have, that if it, it can really eat into your margins on the back end. And so that's why we really kind of shifted our business model to focus on upfront investment to reduce those maintenance costs and to drive profitability. Yeah, that's smart. Now, how do you use any kind of software to manage everything? Uh, yeah, we are using an app to manage all of our maintenance requests and all of our the financials for um, rent receipts. So we don't take cash. We don't take checks. Everything is electronic transfer. Um, and then the same with a maintenance request. If someone has a maintenance request, uh, it goes through the app. They make it on the app and all the communication is handled that way. And that just, again, once it comes in, all I do is swipe it to the electrician or the plumber or the painter, whoever needs to address it, uh, they're notified immediately via email and text, and then they go take care of the problem. Awesome. What app is that? That's Tenant Cloud. Okay. Awesome. Now, there's another app that I, that I want to ask you about. Now, this is an app that that you you own a company called Ask Rick, and and you're a sponsor of the podcast. Um, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with Ask Rick. Um, but for anyone that's not, can you tell us about Ask Rick and, and how our listeners could use it? By the time you find a property, do your analysis, um, get a showing scheduled, do all of those things. You know, it's days usually, you know, could run into a week depending. And I wanted to be able to do that on the fly because I wanted to build scale, but I wanted to do it in a way that would allow me to 
know if it, if it was even worth me going to look at a property. So we built Asbrick, which is rental income calculator. And that's really essentially what it was built on was to understand the cash flow, understand the investment and easily be able to find and filter properties all over the country. Um, and as we start scaling our business, we wanted that, we wanted that ability quickly. And we thought, well, maybe other people would like, like that too. So it was born out of, you know, us wanting to scale our rental business in a way. And then we turned that into Ask Rick. Ask Rick is available in the app stores for both Apple and Android, or you can go to just askrick.com. They have a free seven day trial, so there is no risk at all. I would like to thank our sponsor for making this episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. Chaley is a nationwide lender, and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of different loans, and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or you want to set up a time to talk to Chaley personally, just go to RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, LendingGroup.com, NMLS42056. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. Make sure you subscribe or follow the show. And I will talk to you on the next episode. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.